Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning. Hello. Today we will start our journey of physics. All of you have learned some physics in school? Right, very good. So do you know what is physics? Anyone? What is physics? What are topics have you learned in physics? At least you can tell that. The first topic we learn in physics is called mechanics. The second topic that we learn in physics is thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is study of heat. Okay, thermo, heat. The third topic we study in physics is optics. Optics is study of light, right? Yes. The next topic we study in physics is waves. Sound. That is what you are hearing now. Right? Then we study electricity magnetism. That is there everywhere around us. Electricity magnetism. Then we study modern physics. Electrons, protons, nucleus, photoelectric effect, radioactivity. These are the six topics that we study in physics. You have learned all this in schools, right? Yes. So what is common to all this? What is common to mechanics, thermodynamics, optics, waves, sound, electricity, magnetism, modern physics? Energy. And along with energy, we have got matter. And that is all that we study in physics. Matter and energy. And the interaction between matter and energy. Physics is simple. If you are finding physics difficult, that means you are not learning physics properly. What is the language of physics? English? Is it Hindi? Marathi? Or depends on the book which you are studying from. Mathematics is the language of physics. In physics, we quantify everything. How do we study physics? What have scientists given us to study physics? What has Newton given us? Newton's laws. Yes, right. You have learned Newton's laws in school. So we study physics with the help of laws. To make laws, what do we need? Suppose I want to make a law regarding this room. What is the first thing needed? Yes, concepts are okay. But I need to find out the variables, the physical quantities that I need to make these laws. Suppose you want to see, study how temperature changes with time. How, what is the temperature in the morning? What is the temperature in the evening? In the afternoon? So we need two variables, temperature and time. So to make laws, the first thing required is physical quantities. What are these physical quantities? Temperature is a physical quantity, very good. Time is a physical quantity. These are measurable quantities. We can measure time. We can measure temperature. And these quantities we use in laws of physics. Therefore, physical quantities are measurable quantities that are used in laws of physics. Temperature, we can measure with the help of a thermometer. Mass, we can measure with the help of a scale, weighing scale. So these are physical quantities. Now to measure anything, what is required? Suppose, I want to measure your mass. What is the first thing I need? Right? Weighing scale is required. That is perfect. But what else do you need? What is the first thing required? To measure length, what do you need first? Yes, scale is required. That is correct. But we need units. Without having units, we cannot measure anything. So to measure physical quantities, we need units. 
Yes, what is a unit? Unit is what? It is a standard of measurement. The unit of mass is kg. That is standard for measuring mass. Unit of length is meters. That is standard for measuring length. So unit is a standard of measurement. Now who decides the units? Can I make an announcement tomorrow that the mass of this pen will be called 1 kg? No. Can the chief minister of Maharashtra do that? No. Can the prime minister of India do that? No. Can the president of US do that? No. So who decides the units? Who decides what is 1 kg? What is 1 meter? Or who decides that the unit of mass will be called kg? These things are decided by a body called CGPM. The full form of this is General Conference of Weights and Measures. No, I am not wrong. This CGPM is the short form in French. In English, the full name is General Conference of Weights and Measures. This body decides what units we can use and what are the definition of these units. Now, any measurement we do, suppose we measure a length. Then we have got a number and a unit. If the unit is big, the number is small. If the unit is small, number is big. Not convinced? 1 kg is 1000 grams. So which is a bigger unit? Kg or grams? Obviously, kg is a bigger unit. And which is a bigger number? 1 or 1000? 1000 is a bigger number. So when the unit is small, number is big. When the unit is big, the number is small. Therefore, n is proportional to 1 by u. Now on the basis of these units, we can classify physical quantities into two types. Can you tell me what are the two types of physical quantities? No, not scalars and vectors. That we will be learning later. That way we will be classifying in the next lecture. Units can be used to classify physical quantities. And that classification is, the first one is fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities are also known as base quantities. Units of these quantities are arbitrarily chosen. Unit of mass is kg. So somebody has decided that the unit of mass will be called kg. Unit of length is meters. Somebody has decided unit of meter, length is meters. Unit of time is called second. So somebody has decided that the unit of time will be called second. Why is the unit of time called second? Why not first? Why not third? Why not fourth? Why second? From where this name second has come? Right? Why second? You should ask these questions. Why is the unit of time called second? Why is it not called first or third? As the story goes, somebody defined a small interval of time and he called it minute. Over a period of time, minute became minute. Minute and minute have got the same spelling. Right? Then somebody defined a smaller interval of time. And he called it second. First one was already there, minute. So second one became second. That's how the name second came. Okay, it may be just be a story, but an interesting story anyway. So, these are fundamental quantities. Now we have got derived quantities. Units of these derived quantities depend on the units of fundamental quantities. Like volume. What is the unit of volume? Meter cube. Right? So, meter cube depends on the unit of length. Meters. So, unit of volume is 
uh, derived quantity, derived unit. Let us look at density. What is the unit of density? Kg per meter cube. A unit of density depends on the unit of mass and the unit of length. So, all these are derived quantities. Now, let me ask you one simple question. In one hour, how many minutes you have got? 60 minutes, right? Yes. And one minute, 60 seconds. One day, 24 hours. If you look at every other place, we have changed to multiples of 10. 1 kg, you have got 1000 grams. 1 meter, you have got 100 centimeter. Then why do we still have 60 seconds in a minute? What is special about the number 60? Why do we have 60 minutes in an hour? Why do we have 24 hours in a day? Why don't we change it? Why don't we make it 100 seconds in a minute? Or 100 minutes in an hour? And 20 hours in a day? That will be very good. We will have less number of hours to work. Only 20 hours. Less number of hours to study. Everywhere you have gone to multiples of 10. Why do we keep it 60? Right? You should ask your teachers these questions. Why is we have 60 seconds in a minute? What is special about 60? Why not make it 50 or 100? Anyone? The reason we have got 60 is that 60 is divisible by 2. 60 is divisible by 3. 60 is divisible by 4. 60 is divisible by 5. 60 is divisible by 10. 60 is divisible by 12. So we can easily have half a minute, one third of a minute, one fourth of a minute, one fifth of a minute, one sixth of a minute, one tenth of a minute, one twelfth of a minute. That's why we like the number 60. 60 is not a bad number. Some of you may think 60 is a bad number, 100 is a good number. But 60 has got so many factors. Why do we have 24 hours in a day? Why not make it 20 or 25? The reason we have got 24 hours in a day is that 24 is divisible by 2, divisible by 3, divisible by 4, divisible by 6, divisible by 8, divisible by 12. So we can easily have half a day. You have 24 hours in a day, we cannot have half a day. So 24, easy to have half a day. One third of a day, one fourth of a day, one sixth of a day. One eighth of a day. Many people work one third of the day. So they can work for eight hours. Because this 24 and 60 have got good number of factors. That's why we are still living with these numbers. Everywhere else we have gone into 10 or multiple of 10. Explore more about the topics you love with Topper. Subscribe now and keep learning.